this is a very personal question. It's, it's not just an abstract theological question. It's one that torments some believers because they have friends or family members that once walked with the Lord and now they're away from God. Can they come back? They've renounced the Lord. They've joined another religion. Can they come back? And then there are believers that are personally troubled. They think, oh, I've sinned and I've sinned one too many times and maybe God's rejected me and there's no way back. And there, there's one passage in Scripture that troubles many. It's Hebrews chapter 6, verses 4 through 6. Hebrews 6, 4 through 6. And this is, this is what it says. And this is a, a verse that is unique in the whole Bible. Hebrews 6, 4 through 6 says this, For it is impossible in the case of those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, and have tasted the goodness of the Word of God and the powers of the age to come, and then have fallen away to restore them again to repentance, since they are crucifying once again the Son of God to their own harm and holding Him up to contempt. How do we understand this verse, this passage? First, let us remember the good biblical principle of interpretation, that if you have 100 clear verses and one verse that is not seemingly as unclear, that you do your best to interpret the unclear one in light of the clear, rather than turn things upside down and reject the clear testimony of the rest of the Bible. And at worst, you put the unclear one on the shelf until you have more insight and follow the counsel and teaching of the hundred clear ones. In this case, we have a whole Bible calling apostates to return. A whole Bible saying, I judged you, I sent you away, you turned away from me. God speaking to Israel, to his people and saying, come back, come back, come back. Even saying, you know, under the law, you couldn't come back. I'm the husband, I divorced you, now you're married to another. Under the law, I could not have you back. But I'm saying, come back if you repent. Jeremiah 3, Jeremiah 4. There's a beautiful passage in Jeremiah 3, 22. And, and it's, it's, it's a wonderful verse with the same root, shuv, turn back. It says, shuvu banim shovavim. Er you hear that shuv over and over again. Turn back, oh back-turning children. I will heal your backsliding. What's the whole parable of the prodigal son? And, and you've got really a threefold parable. Lost sheep, lost coin, lost son. That God goes after the lost to bring them back. That the father is waiting to embrace the prodigal. What's the message of the end of James, Jacob, the fifth chapter? The last two verses tell us if one strays, if a brother strays, a brother or sister strays from the faith and you're able to bring them back in repentance, that you save them from death and covered a multitude of sins. Over and over, Jesus speaking to the seven churches in Asia Minor, even to Revelation, uh, uh, to Laodicea, which was so deceived and, and so misled. What does he say? As many as I love, I rebuke and discipline. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Come back from wherever you are. So I want to declare to you loudly and plainly, no matter what you've done, no matter how far you have fallen, if you cry out to God for mercy, if you long to be forgiven and in right relationship with Him, that is the Holy Spirit drawing you and God desires your repentance. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That is a statement that remains true. He takes no delight in the death of the wicked, Ezekiel 18, Ezekiel 33, but rather that the wicked would turn and live. You say, what about Hebrews 6? It's a difficult passage. It's difficult for Calvinists. It's difficult for Arminians. It's difficult for those who hold to once saved, always saved. It's difficult from many perspectives. The best way I understand it is this, that it's written to Jews. And there were Jews thinking they could deny the Messiah. They could walk away from him and they could go back to their old way of life, go back to the sacrificial system and still be right with God. And God's saying, no, there is no sacrifice for sins. You're crucifying the Son of God over once again. And in that state, in other words, when you're in that state of denying Jesus as the Messiah, there is no repentance. Don't deceive yourself into thinking there is another way. And even if you're not convinced that's the right interpretation, take the overwhelming testimony of the whole Bible. Yes, apostates can be renewed in repentance by the grace of God. It does happen. Don't lose hope.